you ever watch a music artist who could sing, but the performance just made you want to go to sleep? Or, yes. you know, one who could move the crowd, but, you know, make your ears bleed. Mm, well, stage presence can make or break a performance. And today's guest is a world-renowned performance development coach who's worked with the best and brightest. Her A-list clients include, listen to this, you got Janet Jackson. Kelly Rowland, one of my favorites, and Lil Nas X, and she's the founder of The Rose Effect. KJ Rose, thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you for having me. This is exciting. This is really exciting. Uh, and just so I just want to make the, the correction that the clients are Lil Nas and and um, MBJ and some others. However, I sang background with Janet Jackson and Britney oh. Spears. Oh, wow. Yeah, so that was wow. like the first part of my my career, and so and and I did a show. Kelly Rowland had me on her show, Chasing Destiny, as a performance coach. So one day I'll coach them as well. <laughs> but right now they were um, responsible really for giving me the tools and really helping me to have a platform in which to build um, my expertise. Wow, so grateful to that. them. Yeah, definitely, that's amazing. So you're from the South Side of Chicago and also a FAMU grad. How did your background yep. help you get into the music industry? It uh, was so just, um, you know, like these moments were so pivotal for me. Um, just being from Chicago, I started in the choir and I had such a stage fright, which is probably why I'm a coach now, because I understand what that feels like. Mm -hmm. um, and so, but that helped to build um, my my inner confidence. Like I knew that it, it, there was something about performance that I really loved, but I didn't think that it would be something that I'd make a career out of. And so from singing in that choir to the solo children of Chicago um, to going to FAMU, which was like, I'm surrounded by people that just are, are talented and they would push me and I pledged uh, Delta Sigma Theta, the Beta Alpha chapter. And it was always like, are you singing right? It was like understood. So we'll have you sing at our next event. Um, and so that really started to build something in me and, and my body would have an adverse reaction to um, performance, but I, I love this thing so much. Um, and then that took me to being at my lion sister's house, Shelly Bishop, who was great friends with the chairman and CEO of Sony Music Publishing now. He was with EMI then, and he came to her graduation and they were like, our friend can sing. So it's funny, like you just have your like cheerleaders. They were like, our friend can sing. I'm like, okay, I ain't no clown, no, I'll just be chilling. Um, and so he was like, well, I'm out tomorrow. And I was like, yeah, I'm dying. <laughs> I feel that. <laughs> I love it. And as, and, a huh? and as a performance coach, what techniques do you use to get people out of their comfort zone? Because I used to actually be shy when I was younger. I never thought mm -hmm. I'd be doing this today. Um, for me, it, everyone has a different way of processing. And what I've understood and learned is that I meet people where they are. Uh, and then after that, I shock their system immediately because I need them to see, number one, that I'm not here to fix you. I'm only here to agitate, irritate areas in you that may have been lying dormant or that you didn't even believe existed. So in shocking their systems, I'm showing them what they're capable of. And then we work our way. So because once you see what you can do, you can't go back. So then I start from the beginning and then we just kind of build those tools so that you have an arsenal in which to pull from. So every artist is different. You know, um, specifically with Lil Nas, he had gone from, you know, obscurity to notoriety uh, with beautiful Old Town Road. And so my job was to, number one, just let him know that what he had, what he was bringing in already counted. Right. Um, again, there's nothing about you in my coaching that says you're wrong. I am just here to help enhance, help to build your toolkit, help you to take help to take you to a level where you are pre-approving yourself that there's a level of presence every time you hit the stage and that you know you deserve to be there and that's really what it is not performing with um, a, a, from a spirit of you asking permission to be there but performing from knowing that you deserve to be there mm. how is it like working with Lil Nas X watching his performances he just seemed like a natural how was he, really he able is. to you know work and groom himself and build that personal connection when he was on the stage 
It's been repetition um, from the minute that he got signed that first week, I got a call. And so it is every day going in and him rediscovering new things about himself, which meant that the next time he came in rehearsal, we can only just build from that. And so it has been his own kind of natural disposition. And that's really my job. It's not to give you suggestions that I would do. It is for me to assess where you are um, in, in your own inclination and in your own kind of like natural movement and then for me to push you beyond that, to push you in a in a way that says, if there were people in front that could not see properly, can they hear you and still be involved? Mm -hmm. If there were people in front that could not hear properly, can you still pull them in with your expression, with your ability to present and project? And so with Lil Nas, I mean, he, he was already so humble. And so I, it was, I counted a blessing to be able to, uh, for us to come together because I believe he stretched me. I had to go in my arsenal and, mm -hmm. and and, and find things that, you know, because sometimes your 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 schedule, your program, it's it doesn't work for everybody. And sometimes that day, whatever you had planned, that's not the mood that they're in. And so you have to quickly assess where they are and then make the, the adjustments. And I think with him, he was so willing, he wanted to get better. Mm -hmm. He wanted to make sure that he was prepared every time he hit the stage. And that's like the perfect artist to ever work with. All right, well, we will hear more from KJ right after this break. and. Talk about how she's using her journey to help other women. Stay with us. Just the empowerment right there. For those of you just joining us, that was performance development coach KJ Rose, and she continues to join us now here on Being a Woman. So tell us about your women's empowerment workshop. Ah, the, I love this because it's my way. I believe that I'm a vessel, and I know how it feels to be to know that you have a gift and for it to be difficult for you to push it out there and for you to qualify it. And so these workshops are for me to have um, the floor sharing with people my story. Because number one, people want to know, if you're asking for my vulnerability, show me where yours lies. Show me mm. that this, that you didn't just land here. And so I go back and I share stories about how I was on the Apollo and I got booed at the Apollo. And I know why I got booed, let's be clear. It was because the girl after me uh, had brought a busload and they wanted her to win. But at the same time, in that moment, I had to make a decision of who was going to decide what my destiny was going to be. Was it going to be people that that don't even understand or are not aware of my potential, or was I going to do it? Because I know what God put in me. And so these empowerment workshops are for people to identify their force, for them to understand who they are, to, uh, to access uh, their force and to abide in it, no matter what their area of expertise. So I work with artists across the board. I, I believe that wherever you occupy the most space, that's your stage. So whether that space is in the boardroom, if that space is on a traditional stage, if that space is in the interview room, audition, how are you maximizing um, your your presence? How, how is it that when you leave the room that you know you've left it all on the floor? And so these empowerment workshops are very interactive. They're immersive. I want people to stretch their comfort zone and stretch beyond their perceived capacity. So first we access what they believe they already have, what the assets are that they believe they have. And then from there, I push them beyond it. Now I said, okay, that's great. So let, let's try for you to work on this end, this extreme where you never thought you would be. And then we fill up the space because really my goal is to help in the corporate space and really in, in, in the artistry space, wherever your personal narrative is and your professional narrative, I need you to diminish the space between. Mm, I love that. Now your slogan and, is begin a seed, emerge a rose. Now what tips can you give yeah. our viewers to help them blossom where they at, where they're at right now in their life? Mm -hmm. um, I would say don't outsource your win. You know, it's, it's pre-approving yourself. It's walking in the room, knowing that 
Uh, you've already won. It's knowing that you are the solution, but you've got to do the work prior to that. You've got to make sure that uh, you're in this, whatever that your craft is, it is that you're honing it so much that whatever anyone else's opinion is, there's not enough space for them to get in and dictate how you walk in, in your gift. Um, I would also say show up. Everything counts. Uh, make sure that you show up in your gift, show up in your space, show up in your your energy. And you can't wait to access the energy in the room. You've got to bring your own and you've got to know that you've already been qualified and what you were put here to do. But that is the work that you do before, which is what led me to uh, creating um, a performance guide called The Rose Effect, uh, Eight Steps to Delivering the Performance of Your Life. I wanted to tell stories about uh, my journey in the music industry and the lessons that I learned from there and then share my own vulnerability in it um, to just help you understand that there's a process for it. You cannot circumvent the process. We all have to go through it. And so that is, you know, what I would say. And that leads me to, this. Oh, can you see? Can yes, you see you it? Can. Can you see uh -huh. it? Okay. <laughs> so um, it is a guy that, um, you know, never came from me saying, oh my God, I have so much information to share. As much as it came from, I had been doing workshops in London and Australia and uh, Ireland, and I felt like you know, once it was complete, I did not have a tangible solution in which to leave people. I wasn't able to say, okay, here's some work that can be done until the next time I get to you. And so I realized that God was stretching me. And if you're going to be a vessel, you got to continue to be stretched. And I had to push past my own perceived capacity and step into uh, writing this performance guide for artists to do the internal work. So it's it's reconciling the internal narrative so that by the time the external expression is ready, it's truthful. You know, it's it's explicit, explicitly you. It can't be hijacked. Your story and your ability to tell your story, story in a compelling way, it should never be a hijack. I should never be able to say and step into your story because you own it to a degree where it, there's no room for that. There's no capacity. So that is what I would say. And quickly before we go, where can we get more information about you and your workshops? Yes, you can find me at roseeffect.com, um, Instagram and Twitter, KJ Rose Effect, E F F E C T. And, uh, or you can just email me, contact at kjrose.com. I would just love to, I'm, I am an artist at heart. Like, and so I speak the language of an artist and I love it. And I believe that this is uh, my assignment. And however I can be of, of benefit and blessing to others, I'm, I'm here. Thank you so much. You have a beautiful spirit. I love it. I feel I'm refreshed. Not an artist. I'm ready for the weekend. Exactly. I'm not an artist, but I definitely feel like I can learn a lot. For sure. And continue to grow my you craft here on this stage. Oh, I am. You, you, you are. are an artist. Yes, I am. <laughs> There's an art to what you do, it, sitting up there, being able to give us information and feeding us. Come on, see? don't let me This go is why we need her exactly. in our lives, okay? Can you come down here? Like, <laughs> thank you so much. Of course, thank you for having me. Blessings. And Amir, thank you, Amir. <laughs>